Ben Bradley. Look, you speak out. Reducing homelessness across the UK has to be a huge priority, and I welcome the work that government's doing to take steps forward. The Homelessness Reduction Act will ensure that all English local authorities, public services and third sector work together more effectively to prevent homelessness. The Act, which comes into effect in April, will also help the government to meet its aim of eliminating rough sleeping by 2027. I'm delighted that these efforts to bring local services and providers together, uh, and I've spent much of the autumn in my constituency examining our, examining, examining our local homelessness services, holding a number of summits with different groups from the public sector, charities and business, and bringing along both the then Minister responsible for homelessness and the Home Secretary to meet with them. What was abundantly clear from those discussions is that drawing up invisible barriers between services and being protectionist about priorities and funding cuts does nothing to improve the support available to people either homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. I'm pleased that ministers have committed over a billion to tackle homelessness through to 2020, with money going directly to local authorities, as well as to centrally funded homelessness programmes. The pilot studies in particular that will take place to look at new ways of combating this issue are also very welcome, and I hope government will learn those lessons and roll out the successful aspects of those schemes sooner rather than later. Locally in Mansfield, the numbers classified as homeless and in priority need has actually fallen since 2012. And I'm pleased to note that the numbers of people registered living in temporary accommodation has fallen too. That's down to a number of factors, including, truthfully, the good work done by the local authority and by Framework, who provide the Commission services, including an amazing outreach programme. It's heart-wrenching to hear about the lives of some of the people using their service and to hear their stories. When I went out with Framework's outreach team uh, at 6am on a cold autumn morning and met with a number of Mansfield's homeless people, the striking thing is that so many people are in that position through no fault of their own. One in particular struck a chord with me, a young man who'd been injected with Class A drugs by his mother while still at primary school. The truth is he never had a chance. The outreach service is working with him and others to help them get on their feet. And the key thing about the work done by Framework is that they recognise that whilst the housing aspect is quite obviously a huge factor in tackling homelessness, actually equally important is the access to support services around mental health, drugs and alcohol, and a complex variety of needs. It's telling that many of Mansfield's entrenched homeless have, given, have been given housing in the past, but were unable to keep it for a variety of complex reasons. It's concerning that despite the positive figures since 2012, when I said as the, the number of homeless people has actually fallen by around a third, in the past year it started to creep up again. Um, far from the simplistic image that's sometimes painted of homelessness where many people talk about the lack of available housing, this is hugely important, yes, and prevalent in London and other areas where the cost of housing is extortionate. Uh, but in my view, it's not the key issue in a place like Mansfield. The causes of rush sleeping are incredibly complex. Individual circumstances can be driven by mental health uh, issues, addiction, family breakdown. That's why it's so important that local services work with both health and housing departments to offer a coordinated approach. In Mansfield, we have a strong network, including charities like The Beacon Project, committed not just to offering food and a shower, but actually prioritising getting everybody access to those key services. When we talk about homeless people, it's often the rough sleepers that we think of first, but of course there are many who fall into the hidden homeless category, as colleagues have already said. There are many people sofa serving with friends and family without a home to call their own. Young people in particular can struggle with the upfront costs of renting and landlords see them as a risky uh, proposition to rent to. That's why last year I supported Crisis in the Help to Rent campaign, looking for additional funding for local projects aimed at helping homeless people into renting. The other thing that's clear from the discussions I've had locally and with ministers is that a low level ongoing support can make a huge difference in people's lives in helping them not to just gain but maintain a tendency for the long term. As my honourable friend from Colchester has already said, support in managing mental health issues, addiction, financial management, learning difficulties, sometimes even just a regular conversation with a trusted friend can be the difference between leading a relatively normal life and a life on the streets. In Mansfield we have some fantastic support housing associations that help to get people back on their feet and would love to be able to offer this ongoing support too to the people who rely on them but who struggle to access the funding to do it. Often in my experience they do it anyway through their own dedication and at their own cost but they would benefit hugely from more support. I was pleased to see an additional quarter of a million come forward from Mansfield over three years in the flexible homelessness support grant to support the local authority in boosting some of these services. As I said in my first sentence, homelessness is clearly an issue that needs to be addressed as a priority, and it's important that funding reflects this. But I welcome the government's determination to end rough sleeping and to cut the number of homeless people and the multiple measures, pilot schemes, changes that have come forward already. The Homelessness Reduction Act is a big step forward, and I hope to see the Housing First pilot expanded quickly. 
One thing that's often overlooked is that prevention is far better than cure, and this needs to be clearly built into the government's plans if it's to meet its commitment. We must ensure that tackling homelessness remains a central priority and government funding levels reflect its importance, not just in terms of housing, but vitally for the support services that come with it. Thank you. Thank you.